Let's bring in Sky News contributor Prue McSwee now. We'll get to the Matt Keane and the nuclear issue shortly. But first, uh, amid rumours of an early election, Conservative lobby group Advance has announced a campaign to scrutinise the Greens and... Uh, they say expose their extreme left policies. Advance was the same group that successfully lobbied against the voice, the race-based referendum. And donation data shows great support for Advance. Uh, the support hasn't slowed down since the referendum. The Australian reports Advance has got... 306,000 members now, supporters, including 32,000 donors, and they're devoting $5 million on phase one of a national election campaign titled Green Truth. Prue, what do you make of this? The left has uh, been very successful in utilising unions. They've got the bulk of the media backing them and they've got a bunch of leftist think tanks and activist groups, including Get Up, doing their bidding. It's about time conservatives organised a grassroots campaign for themselves. Exactly, Rita. In fact, it's crazy that they hadn't done it years ago, but at least they've got their act together now. And this is probably one of the most important things they can do. You know, for a long time, people thought, sort of thought, oh, well, you know, they're you know, hairy armpitted, sensible shoes, tree huggers. And, you know, they're just caring about the environment and, you know, the water and all those things. But we know that there is a much stronger intention here. And if you would care to look at some of their policies where they want to build, uh, inbuild uh, inheritance taxes, uh, I mean, if anybody is successful, they want to just tax them within a, an, an inch of their lives. You know, they, they want to... Uh, defund, uh, you know, the uh, any non-government schools and also um, apparently also, you know, immigration is going to be, uh, you know, one of their big things as well. So, look, they're, they're a dangerous party and the problem is that Albanese only got in. He had a measly 32.6% of the vote. He would not be in government without the help of the Greens. And now, of course, those preferences will flow again to him and it may just get him over the line. And this is the problem, that people don't realise that there's a quid pro quo and that the Greens will call in and have been calling in uh, you know, payback uh, for having Albanese in government. And this is the terrifying thing. And they're dangerous. So the more we can get out the story of their, you know, their real true intent, the better for everyone. Well, the polling that Advance have done themselves shows that most people aren't aware of the Greens' far-left ideology, their policies. 78% of uh, those who are polled believe the Greens are just concerned about looking after local water, environment, uh, the wildlife, uh, climate action, essentially. They're, but a lot of the policy areas you've just listed, uh, they've got away with having those radical positions because they haven't been properly exposed. So we'll see how successful successful advances campaign is. Now to some new polling on nuclear energy released today. 60% of Australians are in support of having nuclear as part of the energy grid. Uh, the polling showed 47% would even ha be happy to have a nuclear power plant in their electorate, but that number was higher for regional areas where these reactors will be placed. Three in five in the Latrobe Valley are happy with nuclear in their electorate. Uh, same for Port Augusta, 52% for regional Queensland. Hunter Valley was the outlier, Pro. Only 34% of those polled were supporting a reactor in their backyard. Uh, what do you make of these figures? Well, I think that people have woken up in those areas. I don't understand about the Hunter, and I'm sure they'll come around when it's explained in more detail, but you know, they understand the vitality, the jobs, the economic repercussions of having uh, an energy powerhouse like the coal was, and of course this would be. So I, I really am not surprised, and I think that what should happen is that they get rewarded, that they either have cheaper or free energy for a certain period of time to really motivate them and encourage them and reward them. But, you know, it's just... 
absurd watching this farcical play by Labor uh, where, you know, the chicken littles are coming out of the woodwork. You know, when you think about it, would we let the dumbest kid in the classroom determine the curriculum? And this is what we're doing with energy policy. We're allowing these hypocrites, uh, these ill-informed people who have vested interests. When you think about all the people who are coming out now against nuclear, they're all people who have either, oh, we've discovered they've got renewable uh, shares or some interests in it. You know, this is, of course, the companies that are being rewarded with these clandestine uh, payments and, of course, the subsidies are all very keen to, you know, protect their patch. But if anybody has any real understanding of nuclear and how it can be the power source and, and the hypocrisy of this government that has just signed up at some uh, Pacific Economic Forum uh, uh, for a clean energy agreement where one of the three things being discussed in positivity is nuclear. And, you know, you just sort of think, mm. how can they be telling the international community one thing and doing the chicken little stuff with us? So uh, let's hope it's an exercise, this election, in common sense and an intelligence test and not this fear-mongering stupidity that the Albanese government is intent on. Well, we're finally going to have a debate, an adult debate, where people will be uh, able to make a choice. We got it with a voice referendum and we're going to get it with this other crucial policy area, and I think it's long overdue. You mentioned the scaremongering, juvenile scaremongering from Labor ministers, MPs, pictures of three-eyed fish and three-eyed koalas, mm -hmm. just silly stuff. But today we did have this announcement from the, from the Prime Minister. And I'm pleased to announce that today uh, Cabinet has agreed to appoint the Honourable Matt Keane as Chair of the Climate Change Authority. But Matt Keane, the off-brand, the poor man's Malcolm Turnbull, I call him, uh, he was once a fan of nuclear energy. Do you think we'll ever have nuclear power stations in Australia? Yeah, I think so. There's some exciting things happening on the nuclear front. So uh, a company in the U United States is developing technology uh, around small modular nuclear reactors. So that's effectively a nuclear power plant in something the size of a shipping container. Now, uh, right now, uh, the prototype of that is being developed, but we're not expecting that to be commercially available until the mid-2030s. Into the future, will nuclear have a, pl have a role to play? I, I, I think so. And I hope so. Uh, but right now, I can't bet on technology that isn't about readily available. What do you think, Prue? I doubt this uh, appointment is going to be a masterstroke for the PM. <laughs> Well, it's going to be a masterstroke for the Liberal Party, I think, because this man has proven himself to be, you know you know, in each way hit her a little bit. You know, whoever's, whoever's interests he's monitoring, you know, fostering at the moment, he'll go with. And so he's got himself a nice cushy job uh, with this climate change authority and the government is using him thinking that it's going to be a master stroke for them in, you know, cutting down the Liberals. Well, in fact, he's done the Liberals a lot of work, you know, out of a lot of hard work because all they have to do is play that clip that you have just run and also rely on the fact that Matt Keane was one of the most despised and maligned ministers in the Liberal in New South Wales government because of his energy <laughs> policies and the fact that he flipped flopped and was on the wrong horse. He should have been in the Labor Party. So it's all come out now. Mm. It's validated everything we suspected and I think he's going to you know Dutton must be thinking this is my lucky day I've won a lot of well I think he is a uh, a politician who inspires very strong feelings amongst many coalition voters I hear a lot more uh, vitriol aimed at the likes of Matt Keane than I do any Greens, Labor, <laughs> even Teal's MPs and that tells yeah. you Plenty. Now let's talk about multi millionaire actress extraordinaire Emma Thompson, who's joined climate change protests in London again. She's demanding an end to fossil fuels. Here's what she had to say. 
Um, well, because of this, um, because of the, our green and pleasant land is now turning into a bit of um, a bit of a disaster, frankly, and it's been so awful for so long. And this is the most extraordinary coming together of people and galvanising, particularly before an election, because if we don't act on this, we won't have a countryside anymore. It's as simple as that. But I'm not sure she wants to actually live what she preaches. She's a fan of multi-million dollar yachts. She flies all around the world constantly. She's got quite a uh, big carbon footprint herself, you'd imagine. But she wants to preach to the little people about giving up fossil fuels. What amazes me, Rita, is why these people think we care what they think. They happen to be people whose profession is to read someone else's lines, that they don't even think for themselves when they're doing these movies, you know? I mean, I don't care what Emma Thompson or any other actor thinks and how dare they <laughs> presume that we do. And, you know, I used to love that movie, Love Actually. Now, actually, I don't love her at all. In fact, I think she's, you know, over the hill and should go and get in the fetal position waiting for the world to end. <laughs> Well, yes, I did love some of her movies years ago. I haven't seen anything I like for a long time from her and certainly not her political views. Now, finally, Prue, King Charles is set to visit Australia for the Everest horse race in Sydney, but he's not going to be sticking around for the Melbourne Cup. I think people in Melbourne are going to be a little bit, uh, I don't know, feeling a little bit snubbed by this. Uh, what do you make of uh, what's planned for this tour? Well, you know, Melbourne has always been, I thought, the more royalist sort of society. You know, they like to think of themselves that way. Uh, so it's a big, you know, spit in the eye for them because there is so much rivalry between the Everest and the Melbourne Cup. Uh, and uh, good on Peter Volandis. You know, he's the one. He's been working on King Charles for a couple of years now. And given he's got, you know, health issues, uh, I think that, you know, score one for New South Wales, but I'm sure there's going to be a very bitter taste in the mouths of the Victorian Racing League. You know, they won't like it at all, but will they turn um, Republican? I don't think so. I'm sure they'll be lining up, and you can bet the Volandis might even invite them up so they can, you know, bow and curtsy and oh. all of the wor works. <laughs> Not that I'm being well, evil or anything. <laughs> Well, I don't know how much uh, of a fan of horse racing the king is. Obviously, we remember Queen Elizabeth was absolutely uh, enamoured with the sport. She had horses and some of the most uh, wonderful footage of her was watching her horses race. Uh, so we, well, let's, let's hope King Charles uh, uh, makes, makes an effort to come down to Melbourne and see the Cup Room McSween. Thank you so much for your time this evening.